Welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective and specifically SF Sangha. I'm Augusta Hopkins. I'm really thrilled to be here. One of the things I've been reflecting around a lot lately is that we have choice. We have choice. We have choice. And we forget. You know, we get caught in the thing. We get caught in the thing. And I, I, don't know, I get caught. Right? It's, it's how it is. And then we notice, we remember, we wake up. There's this moment of, oh, I don't have to do that. Or, oh, I can do that. Right? Either side, it's freedom when we're in choice. It's, it's absolutely liberating. Yeah. And we can choose how to incline the mind or how to incline the heart. And that impacts how we experience the next moment, how we experience our lives, how we experience the world how we're able to respond to the things that aren't as we would wish for them to be. Able to respond to dukkha. And then we have these moments when we're not taking it personally. Like, oh yeah, that happened. My car got rifled through. This plan isn't doing so well. Oh yeah, it happened. I've been forgetting to do these things that bring me joy. Well, my mind wasn't really present as I enjoyed walk my walk. I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have. Like, right. Because we're not perfect. But we notice. And when we greet it with tenderness and love and care, we're inspired forward into an action of greater care and love. Greater attentiveness. Greater attunement to ourselves to our intuition or to what we like, what brings us joy or the thing that is not bringing us joy or greater appreciation of our community. Like we notice, oh yeah, people showing up, people listening. I'm not sick anymore. I had this crazy procedure and I'm okay. I almost forgot I had the procedure. Like what? <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Mm. And our habits, as I see it, is to forget to appreciate the things that are good or the things that are cool or the things that are okay or the things that bring us joy or whatever. We forget to appreciate it. If any of you are in a long-term friendship or in a long-term relationship, romantic relationship or any kind of thing that's been happening for a while that you like, even an activity like swimming or surfing, you might notice that you start to take it for granted. And then you can remember that, oh, I could appreciate this. Okay. And then when things aren't so great, or if there's something that's not perfect, we get sucked, sucked to it like a magnet. There's a person who lives in Marin, I think that he calls himself a neuropsychologist. His name is Rick Hansen. And he offers these words that have been really helpful for me, that the mind is like Teflon for pleasant experience, just sloughs right off, like doesn't, nothing touches, nothing makes contact, 
it's funny more and more that Teflon is also associated for me with toxin, toxicity. So when I offer that, it's like, oh, maybe ice, <laughs> but maybe there's something that's toxic about like this habit of just not noticing the pleasant, right? And it's like Velcro for the unpleasant. Oh, what's not okay? What's not okay? And we come to that quite naturally. That's our evolutionary journey. If you look at your ancestors and this journey of evolution back to the single cell organisms, it's the ones that notice the problem and reacted with by fight or freeze and with that reptilian brainstem response, like, oh, problem that survived to have offspring. So it's hardwired in us. What's wrong? What's wrong? And we can practice to cultivate other wiring that notices the flowers as we walk, that enjoys the warmth of the sun on our skin when it's when it's sunny or enjoys the cool breeze when it's too hot or enjoys all these flowers that are happening right now in California. Like we can practice that. And as we practice that, it becomes easier, it becomes more natural. And it's a balance to this negativity bias that we have. And we don't have to get mad about the negativity bias. Just like, oh yeah, okay. Oh, and then I have choice. What do I like to do? Well, maybe I'll spend some more time doing that because whoo, I'm not very happy right now, <laughs> right? I don't know about any of you, but for me, I say that like so liltingly and joyfully, it's hilarious. For me, when I'm not happy, my habit is to blame, blame external conditions, blame someone else's behavior, Blame the past, blame society, blame, 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 blame. And I don't know if you have experience with that or not, but for me, when I do that, it just gets me more unhappy. It, it, um, it feeds itself, it snowballs. Like, oh, this sucks, and that sucks, and that sucks, and that sucks, and like all these things suck. And then sometimes, thank God, there's an interruption of that. And there's a, oh, I can do something that brings me joy. I can take care of myself. I can reach out for help. I can do something active. And just that act of doing something that feels good or brings me comfort or It starts in its own feedback loop. And it's like, oh, and then it leads to that and leads to that and leads to that. And it's suddenly a completely different thing. But there has to be that moment of recognition. Oh, I do have some agency here. I can do something, right? For me, it's like, I can feed myself. I can get outside more. I can reach out. I can go swimming. I can go hiking, I can ride my bicycle, I can eat, feed myself, like, <laughs> oh, and I can appreciate the things that are going well. And then I'm kinder and nicer. And then the relationships are more pleasant and easier and they start to be more nourishing when I'm not just miserable and saying how much everything sucks and attacking everybody. It doesn't really feel very good. Um, And sometimes there's some remembering in there that it isn't personal. And that nothing is perfect, right? There are beautiful moments, but nothing is perfect. And it's all temporary. It's all always changing. It's all always changing. Right? And those are the three marks of existence. Those are the three characteristics that Buddha taught. Anicca, Anatta, and Dukkha. Anicca, impermanent. Ruth King offers it as not permanent, which I really like that language. It's not permanent. Anatta, it's not personal. It's not about me. It's not about you. Life happens due to all kinds of causes and conditions. It's like that. And guess what? 
we can influence those causes and conditions. When we remember. And when we don't remember, we're influencing them too. Right? And then dukkha. Not perfect. Not satisfactory. Unsatisfactory. Stress. So everyone translate dukkha. I love not perfect. Also from Ruth King. Not permanent. Not personal. Not perfect. Oh. Oh, right. People are going to rival through my car. There's a lot of economic strife. Like that's what's going to happen. Oh, right. Right. It's not punishment. Yeah. All right. So let's sit. So let that marinate and percolate inside of you. If you want to stand up and stretch or use the bathroom or whatever your body might need. Please take care of yourself. I think it's great to move the body for many reasons. One of them is that I think that it helps us to feel into the body. If we give it a little movement or stretch, we can feel what's going on in there more. And the awareness of the body, mindfulness of the body is the first foundation of mindfulness as taught by the Buddha. Mindfulness of the body, this body, this precious body, I'm sure there are lots of whys. I can't know the whys. Can't know the why. And I do know that one of the gifts of that practice of mindfulness of the body is that we're always here with our body, you know, like as much as we might neglect it, we're, it's actually always here with us so we can tune into it anytime, anywhere, any place. And the body is always in their presence. It can't go anywhere else. It cannot go anywhere else. And so we practice. So settling into your posture, whether that's sitting or standing or lying down. Or maybe you're walking. I'll offer practice for for a stillness posture, but do what works for you. As we tune into the body, notice if the eyes want to remain open or if they want to close. If open is most supportive, allowing the gaze to land somewhere neutral or soothing, blank wall or ceiling is great. Candle flame, plant, <coughs> a blossom, or just the floor, allowing the gaze to be soft. And if closed eyes feel good, allowing the eyes to close. And noticing where attention is drawn. And how does it feel in the body? Maybe awareness of the sensation of the body, of the heart, of the gut is accessible or available. If so, just resting into that experience, being with the body, 
the heart, the gut, the body more broadly. Thoughts will come and go. That's what they do. They too are impermanent and impersonal and imperfect. Arising and passing through the myriad causes and conditions. We can notice how it feels in the body. Whatever might be going on internally, externally. Maybe you're not really feeling anything. You're like, what is she talking about? Or there's some reversion. That's all good. If so, you might practice bringing awareness down into the feet. Or the knees, if you're sitting on the floor, cross-legged. Feeling how you're rooted into the coccyx, the tailbone, the tip of the spine, the base, the root. Touching and feeling our contact with the earth. Grounding down. Allowing ourselves to feel, to experience directly the embrace of gravity. The earth is hugging us, holding us close. And we feel it. Can we surrender to it? Can we let go and allow the body to settle a little bit? Maybe not, that's fine. Exploring, opening, receiving, resting, being. Experiencing this body, resting here, no need to do anything. Your mind keeps doing its thing, no problem. What is our relationship to that? Can there be some gentleness? Maybe the mind needs something else or wants something else to attend to. 
perhaps the sensation of the hands resting on the lap or wherever the hands are. Feeling into the hands, resting. Allowing the whole body to rest this precious gift. The gift of rest and the gift of presence giving ourselves our attention. Listening to ourselves, attuning to this body. Knowing that whatever you are aware of, it's okay. We're cultivating awareness. And exploring the vessel of the body as a vehicle for that awareness. Maybe you can feel the whole body resting here, maybe. If so, enjoying that, savoring that, attuning to this experience of the whole body resting. And maybe that's not available, no problem. Noticing if there's something in the body that is resting. Maybe the hands resting on the lap or the buttocks resting in the chair. Feet. Resting on the floor.
Can you attune to this experience of resting? If resting is happening for you on overdrive and you're falling asleep, you might open your eyes to bring in some wakefulness, some alertness. If the mind is so busy that you're not finding rest or peace, You might explore bringing attention to the exhalation, feeling the body resting, settling, letting go. With each exhalation, When the mind is busy, it benefits from something specific or particular to rest onto. Resting in to the field of awareness. Letting go. Allowing the body, allowing the heart, allowing the mind to rest, precious gift.
If you're feeling the body resting, great. Keep enjoying that, tuning in to more and more subtle experience. And if you could use a little more support, exploring tuning into the low belly. Couple finger widths below the navel and inside. Noticing how it feels in there. Or maybe no sensation is present. Checking out the heart. The heart center from the back body or the front body. Maybe too much effort arises as you do that. Letting it go. One can also consciously explore practicing letting go. Often that's supported by the exhalation. No right way to do this. We're exploring, cultivating presence, cultivating ease, developing our ability to befriend ourselves and the moments, just as we are, just as it is. Oh, it's like that. It's like this. Okay, I got you. Allowing our nervous system to feel our presence, our care, our love, our kind attention. Resting. It's all good. Whatever is happening is okay.
and consciously intentionally bringing into the heart, mind, a felt sense or a visual or verbal memory, something that brings you joy and experience, a person, a place, the presence of a non-human being, animal of some sort, or a rock. some experience, place, or being that brings you joy. Recalling it, actively, consciously recalling it. You might have a felt sense of it, or you might see it, or it might be kind of a verbal story. However it shows up in your system, it's great. Maybe nothing shows up, that's okay too. And simply enjoy resting. Resting broadly or down to the low belly or into the heart or the breath, whatever support it. And if there is something that comes to mind that brings you joy, allowing it to grow and really be felt, allowing yourself to re-experience this joyful experience, this pleasant, nourishing, nurturing experience. It might be subtle, it might be big, Maybe it's not joy. Maybe it's settledness or contentment. Great. Trusting your own instinct, your own heart, your own intuition, your own gut. And resting into this. Experience, place, activity, person, non-human being. If many come up, choosing one. If none come up, that's cool too. It's favorite. Allowing your whole system to feel the comfort, the delight, the whatever it is. Or just resting. See it, feel it, you might even smell it. You allow yourself to be there. 
in that experience, in that place with that being. Maybe your mind shifts to a different one. That's fine. Trusting your journey. Trusting yourself. Continuing to enjoy stillness, allowing that memory to be stored, maybe into the heart or the gut. Thanking the memory or memories, thanking yourself for your practice of presence, of resting, of allowing, of opening. Thanking yourself for giving yourself the gift of practice. of journeying with or into the Dhamma.
Joy and stillness just a little bit longer, resting and opening. Receiving the sound of the bell, little wake up sound to let you and the bell know it will be invited to sound. And then two full invitations of the bell. Listen, listen. The sound of this bell brings me back to my true home. Staying in stillness just one beat longer so that as you begin to move, it can be done with full awareness of the body. Enjoying spreading awareness into movement. Whatever ways feel good for you, for your heart, for your gut. or your body. Really feeling the movements as much as is possible. And as you're ready, bringing in light, whenever you're ready, or whatever level of sightedness is there, taking in the environment that you're in. When noticing if you're able, as you're able, how the body, how the heart, how the mind respond to this environment. Thank you for your practice. I wonder if there are any comments or questions about our, about your experience today, our space. For that, we have a few minutes. Choice, Dukkha, Renicha, Anatta, Teflon, and Velcro. And this amazing ability, capacity to cultivate joy, to incline towards joy or okayness. to allow ourselves the gifts of doing the things that feel good or that nourish us. I know for me, when I remember to do that, when I prioritize that, everything else is easier. Everything else is better. Was there anything easy or hard about the guided practice this evening? Please. It feels like it's very hard to realize that there's a choice. So I have such an identity. 
Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right? It's your fault. It's your fault. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Great. Great. Comes out. It wants our attention. It's like a magnet. It's super sticky. Like it's Velcro. Like that's how it is. And we can interrupt it sometimes. You know, we can't always. You know, we don't remember all the time. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Please. Kind of funny. Uh, I, I had a lot of like obsessive thoughts that I was, you know, I think to like let go of, or at least, you know, not like uh, realizing that I'm acting obsessive thoughts, trying to like let go. I'm feeling very uncomfortable sitting here. Uh, and then as soon as I felt comfortable, then I let go of all the thoughts and I just felt so. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's been said that sleep is poor man's nirvana, right? <laughs> right? Sometimes yeah. that's what we need. And I, my experience is that there's a lot of that this extreme and that extreme, and that we have to hit both of them or touch into both of them and give them space. And then over time, there's the capacity for this. But yeah, our lives are so fucking busy. They're like, oh, stop and, and rest. Then, of course, we're out. Right. So, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. And that's the freedom. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Right. We don't have to then get out the whip. It's like, oh, yeah. No, because I was following when, you know, uh, when my eyes were closed, I was like, oh, I'm going to fall asleep. I'm going to open them, you per se, so that I can, you know, try to not just like drop out really quick. And then <laughs> as soon as I was like uncomfortable with being. They're trying to force me yeah, just, yeah, so, yeah, so, great, exactly. And so it was good, right? Like, oh, right, it's not wrong, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Some of the body needs to sleep, needs to sleep, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was offering a meditation on Saturday and I just fell asleep, and I fell asleep, and I fell asleep, like you know, it happens, it's okay, thank you. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe we'll end on time tonight for a change. And so ever posture in is spiritual enough, I want to thank you for your practice. And to really name to any way you might have benefited through practicing this evening or ever. But that practice that you're engaged in, it benefits everyone we come in contact with. The planet as we interact with the planet. It influences the choices that we make. And thereby it ripples out 
So that as we practice, we are more skillful. We are kinder. We are more gentle. It's just what happens when we put the time in. And so we can appreciate any ways that we've benefited this evening and to know that that is for the benefit of all. May the fruits of our practice be of benefit to all beings and bring peace. Enjoying the bells. And I'll offer one last thing. So each week, sometimes I remember to make it explicit, but each week we have the opportunity to practice with spells of mindfulness, right? This center, the San Francisco Dharma Collective is adjacent to a church and the church bells chime on the hour. And in the Plum Village tradition, there's a lot of support to be found in these bells, in bells of mindfulness. And so we use the small bell here and We've got the church bells. And the intention is that this bell brings us back, back home to ourselves, back to the present moment, helps us to wake up a little bit. And I want to name that anything can be a bell of mindfulness. So we all have habits and we're cultivating wholesome habits or cultivating this ability to wake up and be present. And as we tune in, we notice, oh, there's that. <laughs> whether it's self-judgment or some kind of self-deprecation or judgment of someone else, like whatever, like we have these habits of mind. And so it's been helpful for me. And I remember that when judgment arises to allow that to be a bell of mindfulness, it's like, Oh, hi, thank you. Which is freeing. It's like, Oh, so you have your own habits of mind. Maybe judgment's not the thing. Maybe it's something else, but can that be a bell of mindfulness? Can that help you to awaken from this delusion of fucking bullshit? Like, oh, hi. And you can ask yourself my favorite rephrasing of something from Thich Nhat Hanh, but like, what doesn't suck in this moment when we have this thing? And maybe something you practice with tonight will arise with the prompts or in your meditation of gratitude, appreciation, or joy, or something else. Like, oh, yes. And this. Yeah. There's all kinds of shit. You know, it's not going anywhere. The list is long. And, and what else? And what else? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for coming. It's a, my great pleasure to, to be here and be here with all of you. And I offer those prompts this evening of appreciation and gratitude and joy again and again. One of the things, lots of things are coming up for me, but one of the things that consistently showed up was the opportunity to get to be here and to do this. To share the Dharma. And I, I wouldn't be able to be here doing this if you all weren't here. You know, you make the Sangha possible. We are co-creating this. This isn't something that I do in a vacuum. And my, that's not what this is about. It's not what's interesting. So thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hmm. And as it works for you, this is a Donna-based space. Everything that's offered at the collective is offered from the place of generosity, from a, from a gift. And if it works for your pocketbook and your heart and your wallet, you can make donations. Tom can help you out. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. This is not fee for service. It's not what's going on here. It's not what's going on here. And your generosity is welcome. Like, it's my livelihood. And we've got electricity and internet and heat and you know all the things so thank you so much see you next time i hope whenever it's convenient for you <laughs>